The new Nigeria People's Party called the appeal courts, ruling that earlier saw Governor Abba Yusuf Sah a scandalous judicial debacle. On Tuesday, the certified true copy of the judgment, which was made public, contradicted what was read at the Court of Appeal last Friday. On page 67 of the copy of the appeal court judgment released and signed by the registrar, Mr. Jamil Ibrahim Umar, the appellate court upheld the victory of Abba Kabir Yusuf of the New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP. Meanwhile, the Court of Appeal yesterday said it stands by its judgment sacking Governor Abba Yusuf of Kano, uh, Kano State, despite protests that rocked Kano State following an alleged error in the appeal court judgment that sacked the governor of the state. The APC also dismissed concerns uh, raised about the reported contradictions in the CTC, in the certified true copy of the judgment, saying uh, that it was of no issue. Now, joining us to compound on what could be termed an error or not, typographical error or not, maybe it's some other type, we have Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Magaji um, uh, Mato Ibrahim. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Uh, can you hear us clearly, S.A.N.? Yes, good morning. I can hear you now. All right, brilliant. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Um, very interesting you, development, man. you know, and of course the reactions have been, you know, very, you know, plenty also. Um, of course, that includes the protests that have gone on in Kano in the last 24 hours. Um, but let's get your quick view on what's playing out here. Is it possible that all of those things could be seen as a typographical error or clerical error? Well, you see, good morning once again, and then good morning, viewers. Um, uh, this issue quietly is really getting the public very hot, like uh, you observed rightly. But um, I think we, we, we may have to look at it uh, clearly. Um, it sounds very difficult to accept. But the truth is, you know, these judges work under very intense atmosphere. Uh, in most cases, they had delivered several other judgments in the past. And uh, because they have to write this in longhand, the tendency and the temptation of uh, uh, leveraging on precedents or judgment delivered in the past to do cut and paste and the rest is also very highly present. Now, when that happens, we, what we should look at is the entire judgment itself. You know, I actually don't see much to bother about in this judgment. I have read it and then so many other people have called me to also ask for my views on this. I have also listened to other legal luminaries, uh, one of which I highly respect, uh, uh, Falana, Femi Falana, SAN, has also expressed his own, I listened to him in Arise TV, I've, I've listened to his views on this, but to be honest, we have to try to capture this thing the way it is. Um, it is, to my understanding, that error occurred as a result of intense pressure. Because if you look at it, issues were presented before the justices of the Court of Appeal. All the issues, one by one, were resolved against the appellant, which is uh, the executive governor of Kano State, His Excellency. Now, it cannot be, and it does not even accord to reasoning, to say after, after resolving all the issues against a particular litigant, then you now turn around and and uh, favor him in your concluding part of the judgment. It doesn't follow anywhere in the world. So I think there is no much to bother about in this judgment. And if the judges are saying, no, this was not what we intended to do, it was a slip, it was um, a, a typographical error, or it was an oversight, we didn't see it, even though so many arguments are there, that why is it that the, the, the mistake is happening at the very page where the judge has signed and the registrar of the court has also certified now, but we are all human beings. Whether we like it or not, we, we, we just have to excuse some people. Yes, the, the, the outcome of the judgment myself, I'm not celebrating it, because I know that the popular view in Kano is that the sitting governor has won this election, even the people who have gone to court. You could see even from the attitude of, uh, of uh, Dr. Nasir Gauna, he never joined in the petition. It was the party... Um. Magaji Mato Ibrahim, can you hear us? Uh, all right, we seem to be struggling with the connection over there, but 
You know, the discussions this morning, of course, are centered around uh, bits of confusion in Kano State after uh, a court ruling, you know, concerning the election of the uh, governor of Kano State, uh, Abba Yusuf. And, of course, you know, the APC's candidate challenging his victory in court. The appeal court eventually gave its ruling, but there seemed to be contradictions between what is what was read in court and what was eventually put out as in the certified true copy of the uh, court uh, deposition. And um, so this is where majority of the chaos has emerged from. Which should hold more ground? Which should have which should hold more water? Is it you know what was you know said in court, or the certified true copy of the judgment? And, you know, is it in any way, shape, or form, you know, does it make sense to ask um, um, uh, persons who had, of course, received their CTC documents to bring them back for corrections to be made after a ruling had been given, you know, on, on those documents? After, you know, um, um, one millionaire had also been awarded uh, to one of them, you know, in those documents. So how do we, how do we even wrap our heads around a situation like this? And of course, you know, these are some of the big questions that, you know, would be continue, will continue to answer. These things have continued to shed more light on and, of course, bring up more and more of the conversations, you know, uh, concerning, you know, allegations of corruption in Nigeria's judiciary. There's more and more people that point to these things and say that Nigeria's judiciary is, you know, seemingly dealing with different levels of corruption, allegations of corruption. Um, I did listen to um, um, uh, someone yesterday evening, you know, that described the judiciary as crooked um, um, and of course you know these so these are some of the things that we're going to be you know going you know in and around um, if you look at the your screen this morning you can see there uh, the judgment of the court saying the judgment of the tribunal in petition uh, in that petition basically uh, that's I, I like that we take it back to the other screen uh, well, the other the document markers, yeah. Because he says, um, in the first, in, in the circumstances, I resolve, resolve all issues in favor of the appellant and against the first respondent. Then earlier on, he said, um, I will conclude by stating that live issues in this appeal are hereby revolve, resolved in favor of the first respondent and against the appellant. So I think that's where the confusion is from. It's like, is it in favor of the first respondent? Is it in favor of the appellant? And I was hoping that the Leonard SN can help us clarify yeah. exactly what the court might you, you know, what, what we should have originally followed. And if this is a typographical error, is this something that we normally see in court judgments? Is that yeah, but it's really confusing because even just, just looking at it, it says, uh, I resolve all issues in favor of the appellant and against the first respondent. Then it goes on to say, I find no merit in this appeal, which is liable to be and is hereby dismissed. Exactly. So it's just it's really confusing. Con and then goes on, if you look at the end, the sum of one million naira is hereby awarded in cost, you know, as cost in favor of the appellant and against the first respondent. So uh, we do have the Leonard S.A. and uh, Magaji Mato Ibrahim here with us. We hope you can throw some light on this and shed some light as to what exactly is the cause of the confusion. Welcome back, um, Leonard S.A. And we were talking about um, the confusion concerning that document. And we want to put the document back on screen and read it out again for you to see. And then maybe share with, shared with us if this is something that typically happens in the courtroom, is this the norm? Because there it first says, uh, it's going to go there shortly. Let's please take it. It says, I will conclude by stating that the live issues in this appeal are hereby resolved in favor of the first respondent and against the appellant. In these circumstances, I resolve all the issues in favor of the appellant and against the first respondent. So is it in favor of the appellant? Is it in favor of the rest, you know, first respondent? And then it goes further down to award cost in favor of the appellant. So how... How really is this a typographical error? Maybe we're hoping that you could share some light on this for us. Like I was saying before, sorry, uh, I think I had some network issues here. Um, what, what we should look at for is the entire judgment, not the conclusion. You know, for you to appreciate what has played out in the judgment is for you to read the judgment from page one to the last page. Now, if you isolate the last page, and you draw your conclusion on that, you are likely going to crucify all the works that were done by the Judex. So the, the point there is the entire judgment is about 72 pages. Now, for you to appreciate what has, what has been done, what the position of the justices is on this appeal, is for you to read 
from the beginning where they express all the issues, where they analyze all the issues and argument of lawyers, and then the resolution of the issues. Because at the end of every issue, there must be a holding, whether for or against the appellant. So if you look at the entire issues, which are about eight in number, the, uh, the Court of Appeal has resolved those issues against the, the, the appellant, which is uh, Yusuf Abba. So for the conclusion to come, whether it's, it sounds unacceptable, but the truth is, if you look at it from the first holding, I resolve all the, the appeal, I resolve all the issues against the appellant and in favor of the respondent. Even if the judgment stops at this, it concludes the entire judgment to say that all the issues that were presented for, uh, for determination before the Court of Appeal have been resolved against the appellant. There is nothing, all the additions there are just even long um, to me, whether they are there or not, the judgment stops where all the issues are hereby resolved against the appellants. Any other thing that follows is a consequential order. And you know, consequential orders can be born out of anything. Now, I'm not trying to make excuse for the um, judges. Um, uh, let it, SA and kindly hold on, just to mention, it says in favor of the appellant and against the first respondent. I just, just to clarify that. Yes, but if you look at the if you look at the the first part, there was a resolution also clearly in. Uh, if you look at those concluding parts, it's not everything that was said in favor of the of the appellant. There was one other aspect which he said in, against the appellant. So when you look at all this put together, and then the resolution of all the issues from the uh, first page of the judgment to that particular signature page, you see that everything was against the appellant. So you, we cannot just at this stage begin to impute another meaning to it. It's an expensive mistake. It's not something that should, should have happened, but it has happened. And there is always a first time. And again, issue of uh, uh, mistakes, typographical error in our judicial system is not happening now. This issue has been there. And that is why there is a developed principle. We even call it the slip rule. There is a developed rule where this thing happens and the court has the right to go back to make corrections. The argument might be that how can this be a typographical error where it has been repeatedly made? Now again, I come back to my excuse for the judges. And what is my excuse for them? Working under intense pressure, whether we like it or not. One judge is writing 10, 20 judgments, some even 25, 30 judgments. These are human beings. The likelihood of you, and then you come back to yourself again, there are times you are writing something. Some of us who write every now and then, you write and read with your two eyes closed. You read, you will see that as far as you are concerned, what you have written is correct because you are fantasizing it in your mind. Now, you will not realize that you are wrong until sometimes, so, some months later, when you pick up that document, you go through it again, you will be like, ah, am I really the one that did this? So these things happen. We are all human beings. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to make excuses for the judges. Because when it comes to issue of uh, matters of this nature or public interest, one has to be extremely careful. But it has happened, and I know they themselves have said, no, our intention is that we are dismissing the appeal. Now, if they are dismissing the appeal, then we cannot now hold them onto their mistake, which they have confessed that is a mistake. That was not our intention. As, as, as hard as it may be to some of us, because myself, I'm not happy with the judgment. I'm not happy with it. But the truth is, this is a, a technical error, a, a, a slip, technical slip, a typographical slip that can be can be pardoned. But uh, we are waiting to hear what the what the appeals court will say because I know at the end of the day, I'm sure I'm even expecting that the agency will be involved in this thing because as of yesterday, I was told they have released another copy of the judgment that clarified this issue and are so, saying this is a judgment. So as it is now, we have two judgments flowing, floating around in the in the in the. In the or maybe of, three uh, of, of the court, because yes. the first one so already has where... two. Hmm. Yes. Okay. So now, what's what's the next step? Who is going to the Supreme Court at this point, and what exactly are they going to? What reliefs are they going to be praying at, for at the Supreme Court? Yes, I expect I expect the upper land, which is uh, the NMPP, should go to court. Uh, should go to Supreme Court at this stage because it will be dangerous for you to stay and say, okay, because of this mistake, which mistake these people have. By themselves corrected to say this is our intention and this is that 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 happened wasn't what we had in mind to say so the nmpp should go to supreme court and then when they go to supreme court 
Of course, they have grounds. As, as, as it stands now, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that there are 10 grounds challenging the judgment of the Supreme Court already filed by way of notice of appeal. Now, this other aspect, this other aspect might be taken as also as a ground at the Supreme Court to ask the Supreme Court to make interpretation of that judgment. Because these people are functions official. The, the Court of Appeal, is, uh, is all, they, they don't have the jurisdiction because they have only 60 days to determine this. And I'm sure they cannot come back and make all these necessary application file, uh, file processes within, within, even if, I'm not even sure we still have, they, they still have uh, up to a day or two remaining. So if, if that happens, then it is the Supreme Court. They, if it forms part of the grounds of the appeal, the Supreme Court will look at it and make interpretation. But beyond this, it also calls for the attention of the NJC because it has to do with also disciplinary issue. Because there are some who are arguing that this was not the original judgment, that for them to have delivered the, the judgment in that manner, it means that there was an influence that came that made them maybe at the dying minutes to make a change. And that was why they could not tidy up what they, what they wanted to do. And that suspicion, if you raise this suspicion, you will also not be far from the truth. You understand? But these are subject to investigations, subject to verifications. So the NJC can even be brought to bear. Uh, the, the appellant can file a petition before the NJC to ask them to investigate the conduct of the judges that uh, delivered this judgment, that wrote this judgment and delivered the judgment. The judges will have their explanations. We all know in life, anything you do, you have your explanations. And then uh, they are human beings. If they are able, maybe uh, the thinking of the NJC is the way I'm thinking, that there was so much pressure, and then there is an error of copy and paste. You have copied from another judgment, and you have not been able to read through, or you have read through, but the, the your mind was telling you because your mind was telling you that what you have read is the, is the correct thing and is the position. Then only for you to realize when it was too late, when the, the the document has gone into the public space, you realize that oh no, this was not what I intended to write. So it happens everywhere. There are solutions. It could be legal. It could be administrative. Administrative with the NJC, and then the legal by asking the Supreme Court to make an interpretation of that particular portion of the judgment. Then we'll hear what the Supreme Court will say. But I assure you, as a lawyer, the Supreme Court cannot interpret that particular page in isolation. The Supreme Court must have recourse to the entire body of the judgment for them to be able to give a proper interpretation. Because if you interpret that in isolation, then there is confusion. But the confusion can only be resolved from the body of the judgment itself, where all the reasonings were outlined and then, and then shown and clearly you can understand that if there is any issue of fundamental nature that has been resolved in favor of the appellant that has the tendency of nullifying the appeal, or I'm sorry, of holding the appeal, then the Supreme Court will look at it. But if there are eight issues that were presented and the issues were resolved against the appellant, it doesn't make any sense for us to say to, uh, that that page will now upturn all that has, uh, has been written in the, in the body of the judgment. With all due respect, even I've listened to so many people expressing their opinion. People have called me to express my opinion also in this matter. And I might put my position is still the same, that this is an error as a result of human frailty. We're all human. We are subject to all these uh, 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 humanity faults and failings and the rest. So that is my take on this. All right. Can you hear us clearly? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Um, I, I wanted to ask, because I've also seen, you know, a few comments, you know, can you cl clarify also if, um, let me see how it's stated, if uh, documented um, words, uh, documented records rather, should take precedence over oral records? Can you help clarify which, which, which should go first? No, the law, the law is clear. You cannot, that is in terms of testimony. Yeah. You cannot give an oral evidence to outdo what is contained in a document. That is the law, that is clear. But the situation is not the same. Anybody who is likening yeah. this with that position is also confusing the law. If I write a particular document, it is the product of my brain. And I say, I made a mistake. This thing that I have written is not what I had in mind to write. Remember, um, the judges are not giving evidence in court. So it is not the same situation. That position, as you stated it, that is the law. That you cannot give an oral evidence to outdo what is contained in, an, in a documentary form. That is the truth. But that is when the document itself is not under question. 
But this time around, you have the document under question. So who can resolve it? The owner of the yeah. Do we have do we have some form of a locus to refer to when we're looking at this case? Do we have uh, maybe a decided matter, or do we have a reference point to you know refer to when analyzing this? Talking about, I mean, this point of view, you, you know, looking at the judgment where the you know there's an error. Do we have a reference point in a, a legal reference point that we can make reference to? Yes, I want to believe we in law, we call it precedent. Do we have precedent? I'm sure that is what you mean. We have plethora of such precedent. The Supreme Court have, have in so many instances, uh, made um, taking decision on that. There are so many cases that for now, I cannot be, be able to even tell you how many cases are there. But there are so many of these circumstances that have, that have come before the Supreme Court uh, on this issue. And um, so many uh, decisions have been taken in that. So there are precedent for whoever is arguing for or against to follow. There are. This is not the first time this thing has happened. You, I understand the, the present circumstance has presented itself in such a way that it looks very unpardonable. It looks very unpardonable. It's not as if anybody can be happy with what has happened. It looks unpardonable, but it also cannot take away these things from human 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 situation i so, think my uh, final question would be that yes uh you've mentioned that there are uh, there have been judicial precedents that have been set regarding this particular instance would you say that the precedents that the court is setting right now for the coming cases for the incoming cases would be one that might be a little too technical some have argued that the court is prioritizing technicality over what you know what the people want over the you know, the needs and the wants of people that they're prioritizing technicality a little too much, such that in maybe, this case... Maybe even prioritizing technicality over, you know, evidence, you know? Yes, because in, in this case, many people would argue that, you know, he won the Kano state elections, and unfortunately, uh, the, the tribunal sacked him, right? And so, so would you say that the court is a being a little too technical, and that might pose a challenge in the coming years? So, so uh, now based on the substance of what you are talking about, because you are, you are basically not even addressing the issue of the sleep. If it is the sleep, I've explained. Now, if it is the judgment itself, you see, I may be talking from a very uh, 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 sufficient uh, point of view and a dispassionate point of view. My position is that that judgment, as far as I am concerned, is, a, is, is, is not a good judgment. That is my own position. And even before now, I've expressed a similar opinion on this, even not too long ago when I was uh, on air with you people. I've expressed the same opinion. That judgment, is, is it went too far. But we are waiting to see what the Supreme Court will do over it, as far as I'm concerned. But if we are restricting ourselves to the issue of this uh, uh, error, the human error which I've just addressed, then I, I think I can make out an excuse for them. I can make out an excuse for them as far as I... And I, I assure you that these judges are not happy wherever they are now. Because no judge will want to create this kind of scenario where the whole world is on fire as a result of your of your mistake. No judge will be happy. Even if the intention was to do otherwise, they wouldn't have liked it that it came in this way. So some people are saying that maybe it's just God that is exposing them and whatever, whatever. But in all this put together, my understanding is that the judiciary by now they are also, they must also learn the hard way to understand that the trend that is playing out now in the judiciary is not safe for everybody. Because now even the ordinary men are seeing reasons to see, to believe that certain things are going out around, which is not healthy. It's not healthy for the legal society. It certainly so, uh, isn't healthy. If, um, yeah, so if they are seeing all this, and I expect that they see all this, in, and then they learn from it the hard way, because if your mind is clean, you see, God himself will assist you when you are doing something to see that you do it the correct way. But I am not saying that it is because their minds were polluted. No. I am saying so because I believe that they are also having a lot in their brains, more than what they should carry. If your work as a judge is to concentrate and write your judgment, then concentrate, write your judgment, and forget any other thing. Senator, so uh, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Magaji Mato Ibrahim, we've unfortunately run out of time. But thank you so much for joining us. I think what we can all do is wait for the Supreme Court. First, let's see who files, who takes this case to the Supreme Court. Like you said, it would be best in the interest of NNPP to not relax. 
and to go ahead. But we then see what the Supreme Court has to say about the situation at hand. Thank you so much for joining us.